fill out that information, tear it off, and place it into the offering plate later on in the service. If you're joining us online, we'd ask that you would make a comment so that we can know that you are worshiping with us today. We want to keep you connected to the life of the church and everything that is going on. So I've got two announcements for you this morning. The first is, and we're in the church t-shirt. If you have not ordered one of the t-shirts, there are order forms at both of the entryways, and you can use those to, uh, to order t-shirts. We'll send that order off uh, in the middle of June, so get those in. The second announcement is that next Sunday, we will be preparing to send some of our youth and adults off to summer camp. And so you saw in the newsletter this past week, and you saw kind of rotating on the screens, if you want to send a note of encouragement to one of those campers or one of those adults, you can bring those notes to church next Sunday. We'll have a bag that you can put those in. And then during the week, uh, the, those of us who are going, Johnny Cooper and myself, and the two adults that will be there with the church, we'll make sure that the kids receive those notes throughout the week. So this is a great way for you to share your love and your prayers with our youth as they go uh, away for an amazing week of fellowship, of spiritual growth, and of fun. So friends, let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of the Lord.
We will sing it through twice to invite the Holy Spirit into our church and then into our hearts. Let these lyrics and melodies be our heart cry this morning. Please stand and sing as you are able.
it's summer. It's nice not having to wake up to go to school, is it? Yes? A little bit? Teachers, is it nice not having to wake up to go to school? <laughs> there you go. See, they're way excited about it. Well, we are in a summer series called Verses to Know. So we're going to look at particular verses in Scripture that can be helpful to us. That are ones that maybe we should memorize so we have them in our hearts all the time. And today we are going to hear a story about a guy named Joshua. And so I'm going to read to you a little bit about Joshua. So Joshua was a young man in the tribe that had wandered around in the desert with Moses. And he was sent with 11 other guys to go in and to see this place that God had promised them. And so Joshua goes in, here he is, he's looking, looking at the town. He goes in and he and his friend Caleb say, yeah, this is going to be great. But the other guys say, you know what, it looks pretty scary in there. Those other guys who already live there are pretty big and tough. And we should wait. We should not go to the land that God promised us. And so this causes God to say, fine, don't go in. Wander around in the desert for more time. And then later on, I'll let you, Joshua, be these people. So we're going to hear in the sermon about what God says to Joshua when it's finally time for them to go in and receive all the promises that God has. So as I read the scripture today, I want you to listen because there's a very cool verse in there where God tells Joshua how to behave and how to be so that he can do everything that he has set for him to accomplish. And I hope those words will be an inspiration to you today as they were to Joshua all those years ago. So let's put our hands together and say a little prayer. God, we thank you that you have given us the gift of scripture to give us encouragement and to teach us the truth. We ask that you speak to us today through the story of Joshua, that we would be encouraged just as he was encouraged. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And as our children get their stickers, I invite you to turn your attention to our praise band as they offer a song about how we should orient our lives toward God.
and let us put our trust in God alone, that we would not be shaken. Let us go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we listen to the lyrics of the songs. How firm a foundation that you would be our foundation. God, we come together today because we feel that need in our life. We feel that call that you be present, that you be the source of our life, that we build everything upon you, that we build everything upon Jesus Christ, that we build everything upon the way that the Spirit leads. God, we ask that you would work in us to build our life in that way, to build our life as individuals, to build our lives and families, to build the life of this church family, so that it can be grounded in you, in your love, in your goodness, and in your truth. God, we ask that whatever we have that might be getting in the way of that, that you reveal it to us, that you allow your spirit to work within us to push those things out and to be filled with your love. God, we ask these things because we can't do it on our own, because we are weak, but you are strong. God, we ask that you give us the strength of your Holy Spirit to live according to your will. And we ask all these things in the powerful, the mighty, and the precious name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Well, friends, we are doing some amazing things here at Rosenberg First, and I want to share one of those with you. We're going to have some montage of pictures that appear on the screen that tell the story of the Met trip. That happened last two weeks ago, May 22nd. So go ahead and click on that, start showing those pictures. We had over 30 people go to Beth Israel Synagogue and have an opportunity to learn from them, to see their worship space. They've got this amazing organ that the building was actually built around. We got to go see it. We got to experience the beautiful sanctuaries, they've got a chapel and a sanctuary. And most exciting, I think, was that they took out the tourist scrolls and we got a chance to see them. And our host, David Scott, read to them for us. It was a great experience between the folks here in our METS program, Meet, Eat, Travel, and Serve, and the friends from Faith Richmond, the Joy Club, just over you. And we finished with a wonderful meal at a Mediterranean buffet. A lot of people tried some things, and they all left with happy bellies. So that was good. But friends, the MEDS program is just one of those great ministries that we have that serves the people in our community and beyond. We were able to, to take our church van uh, into the city to experience that. And these wonderful programs exist because of the generosity of this community, coming together to connect with others. And so as the ushers prepare to come forward, I want to invite you to join in to the ministries of these, this church that are making a difference in the lives of people. The ushers, please come. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that your blessings pour out anew on the tithes and offerings that we are returning to your kingdom. God, we were blessed by you to have them, and we return them out of faithfulness of heart and spirit, because we believe in the work of your church. God, we ask that these offerings would be anointed for that purpose, that they would connect people to your love, that they would teach people about your son. God, 
God, we ask all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
listened to them, our summer sermon series. I shared with you earlier on that in the summer, we all go on vacation, right? We're all in and out and traveling. And so I prefer to do sermon series that are standalone, but joined by a theme. So if you happen to be out of town, you don't feel like you've missed something in a sequence, that you got to go back and maybe even keep you from coming because you feel out of sorts. So these are designed so that you can pop in, hear a sermon, and pop out. They're always available for you on Facebook and on our YouTube page so you can catch up later. Uh, but they're designed in that way. You also notice that we are without rows. Hallelujah. <laughs> It is hot, so please feel free to dress for Texas summer. T-shirts, shorts. God cares about what's in your heart, not what you're wearing. So come however you need to come so that you're comfortable this summer. So we are doing this wonderful series called Verses to Know, where we are going to look at particular passages that might be helpful for you. Right? We, we live in a world full of chaos and full of things going on all around us, and it's nice to be grounded, to have a firm foundation, to know what Scripture says, so that when we reach those times of struggle, that we can pull on the strength of God. And so we're going to start today this series with a verse that I absolutely love. It is my favorite verse. It is my life verse. Uh, I actually know the day that I first heard it, and then it resonated with me. I've got a note in my Bible. It was back um, on October 17, 1995. I was a junior in high school, and I heard it in a sermon, and it just resonated with me. And so from that point on, it has been my life for us. It has guided me through some difficult times, and I am excited to share it with you. So let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful gift of Scripture, your love story to us. And God, as we begin to look at passages this summer, I just ask that you would speak to us, that they would resonate with us, that you would imprint them upon our hearts and in our souls, that they would be strength for us. God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing unto you, for you are my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Now, before I read this scripture, I, I want to say thank you to all of you who have suggested scriptures. I've, I've solicited your favorite scriptures, um, and, and there are a lot, way more than the Sundays that I have. Uh, but I'm going to get through some of them, and I don't get to yours. I saw the list, like it can come back around. Um, I'm going to go over the ones that, that lots of people requested or that have a theme that I just feel God is calling me to bring to you. Uh, and if you still haven't given me a scripture but you feel that it's placed on your heart, feel free to do that. Send me an email, send me a text, uh, call the church office. I'd love to hear what God is laying on your heart for me to share. Well, we're going to be, as I shared with the children in the book of Joshua. Hearing about Joshua. It's the beginning of this book, and uh, you hear these words from Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, and Moses is aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give you to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. 
that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. So the verse to know, the one that resonated with me was that last verse. Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now I love that verse, and I've spent a lot of time studying that verse and, and this story and what's going on, so I want to give you some of the context behind it. So I shared a little bit of that with the children. Moses is dead. They wandered around in the desert for 40 years. There was this chance one year in to get into the promised land, and, and they kind of messed that up. They didn't take it. And so they've been stuck out there wandering. And now that the time has come, God is coming to Joshua and saying, the time is right. Now we're going to do this thing that you thought we should do all those years ago. And you're now going to be the leader of these people. So he talks in this passage about this wilderness that they've been in and this territory that they're going to go into. And I like that because sometimes, friends, we feel like we're in a wilderness, don't we? We feel like we're wandering around, we don't know which way's up, we don't know where God's leading us, but we have this promise of what God has offered us. We read it in scripture, we know what life is supposed to be like. There's supposed to be freedom and peace and joy. And so when I look at this verse, I see that hope within it. That though we wander in wilderness, there is God's promise awaiting us. You'll also notice that there read the passage that three times God says, be strong and courageous. One time he even says, and very courageous. Don't be afraid, don't be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This doesn't mean that you're not going to face scary situations. Joshua is facing a scary situation. In fact, that's why all those years ago, when they had the chance to get in there after one year in the desert, they didn't take it. It was a scary situation. So there were these 12 spies that went in, one from each tribe, and they saw what was there, and they came back, and they gave this report. This is what they said. We went into the land which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there, the Amalekites live in the Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country, and the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. It's scary there. They've got some huge cities, some very strong people, warriors, and we're slaves who have been wandering in the desert for a year. And so, 10 of those 12 spies are like, nope. Caleb and Joshua are the only two who say, we should go. We should go up and take possession of the land, or we can certainly do it. But the ten say, we can't do it. We can't attack those people. They are stronger than us. That report has lived on in the minds of these people for 39 years. And I'm sure that as the story got told, the fish got bigger, right? It's scary to go into the promised land. 
so God has to tell Joshua, be strong and courageous. Despite everything that you saw, despite the rumors that have circulated for a whole generation, be strong and courageous. You know, 83% of the people who went said it's scary, we can't do it. It was the minority report that said we can do it. So when you're wandering in the wilderness and you're thinking about getting into the promised land, it doesn't mean it's not going to be scary. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And then God says to Joshua, you have to remember everything that you've learned while you've been in the wilderness. You have to remember the law that God has handed down, that I've handed down. Obey the law my servant Moses gave you. The book of the law. He references passages within Deuteronomy as God is speaking. He's saying, remember these things. We're calling to memory what has been written. Our hymns today affirm a foundation will build my life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. We have to cling to scripture when we're getting ready to make that journey into God's promised land. Because it is going to be scary sometimes. It's not going to be easy. So all of that wrapped up together brings us to Joshua 1. And I love the way that it starts. Have I not commanded you? Have I not commanded you? And that's one of the reasons that this is a life verse for me. Because I feel that when I get that kind of way, and I'm feeling like maybe the obstacle is too big, it's too scary, I don't know what to do, that I can identify with Joshua and those people. And what does God say to him? He asks him a question. Have I not commanded you? And then I have to ask myself that question. What has God commanded me to do? What have I been commanded to do? And usually that's enough to snap me back into alignment with God's will. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. So whatever I know God's will to be in my life, in order to step into that, I have to be strong and courageous. Then it says, do not be discouraged. Just like Joshua was one of those early spies who had 83% of the people telling him, don't do it. Friends, we're going to have people telling us when we're trying to answer God's call, don't do it. You can't do that. That's too big. Where are you going to figure that out? How's that going to work? Where's the money coming from? Who's going to do it? All of that stuff can be discouraging. God says, do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you are. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you forever. I love that verse. That question, have I not commanded you, is almost like God saying to me, remember who you are. Remember whose you are. Remember what I've called you to do. Now this last week, my family and I were on vacation. We had a wonderful time remembering who we are, who I am. I celebrated my grandmother's 100th birthday. We had over 60 cousins all in to celebrate. We drove in from Texas and Florida and Michigan and New York 
and some who just had to drive up the street. I remember who I was in the context of my family. We got to spend time and actually spend the night for three nights on the family farm that I descend from. We got to walk into my grandfather's old store. We then left there after being anchored in who I am as a whatever last name was there. They were all there. A Morgan, a Robinette, a Swain, a Fisher, all of them. Then we went to North Carolina, where Baron and I got to take our children to a state park that is very important to us. Stone Mountain State Park. It's this massive granite face. And I grew up hiking there as a child. My church used to go, and we would have picnics on the large field below the granite face. And then those who were of the mind would go and hike the four and a half mile loop up the waterfall and across the face and back down. Well, about 23 years ago, I had the opportunity to share it with my husband. Uh, what I didn't know on the way to the hike was that it was going to have significant value to us for the rest of our lives. Because on the top of that mountain, he proposed. <laughs> and so we got to take our children there and to relive that. And he proposed again. The, the first time I got this beautiful ring here, and the second time I got this beautiful ring. <laughs> it's a little smaller than when he gave it to me. Uh, and this time we had a photographer. So Layden was able to take pictures of, of the second proposal. Uh, and I answered the same way. So just <laughs> one. And then we went the next day to a river that my husband and I rafted together when we were dating. We went what water rafting. And then we went to Georgia and saw our friends where we lived before we moved here to Texas. Summer is good for that. Letting us step out of the busyness of our lives and take vacations, spend time with family, Visit places that are meaningful to us. Remember who we are. And so this scripture, Have I Not Commanded You, invites us to do that every time we read it. Every time we recite it in our minds. <laughs> Have I not commanded you? What has God called you to do? How has God called you to step out of your comfort zone into his promises, into a new way of being? Be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Friends, we're getting ready to enter into a time of communion. As it's the first Sunday of the month, we'll be the long liturgy. But as I prepare to do that, I just invite you into a time of prayer for yourselves. What is God commanding you to do? What wilderness do you need to step out of? And what promise of God do you need to step into? He is waiting.
who earnestly repent of their sin, who dwell in charity with their neighbors and intend to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Because the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear, have mercy on us and forgive us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, pardon us of all that is past and grant that we may ever serve you in newness of life to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In his great mercy, our almighty God and heavenly Father has promised forgiveness of sins to all who repent and with true faith turn to him. May he have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these comforting words that Jesus Christ our Savior says to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and our joy to give thanks to you in all places and at all times, Almighty God. You are the source of all truth, life, and love. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you with the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Father. For in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Your Spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to proclaim freedom from captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the year of the Lord's favor. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once and for all, that by his suffering and death he might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim this great mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O Father, receiving these gifts of bread and wine with thanksgiving for the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and partake of his most blessed body and blood. By your Spirit, make us one of Christ and one as your church, that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjugation under your Christ, and gather us together with all your saints in the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. We ask this through your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit in your holy church be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom.
Please receive this vocal benediction. And I will raise you up. 